Hi everyone, I am Dr. Shanti Vardhani, General Surgeon, working in Ashoda Sikindrabad as a consultant. Today, I want to discuss about fistula in ano, which is very much more commonly seen in many people. So, we are going to have some discussion about that. Fistula in ano is nothing but a fistula which is forming at the anus. That is a communication between the anus and the outwards at the perineum. Surrounding the anal area, there will be a communication from the anus to the surrounding anal kin. That is called fistula. It is nothing but a tube-like structure from anus to outside. There are the fistula in ano, mainly it is divided into four types according to the parts classification. For PC onwards, uh, we are seeing the fistulas in many people. In ancient times, they used to treat in different ways and now we are treating in different ways because previously the people don't know the types of fistulas. Now, because of uh, imaging modality and lot of other uh, advancements, we can know the fistula is divided into mainly four types that is subcutaneous, interspentric, intraspentric, extraspentric and supraspentric. But subcutaneous is usually considered as a small swelling so it is not included in the classification. We are mainly concerned about uh, the four, interspentric and uh, intraspentric. These two varieties are more commonly seen. Almost in 90% will get only interspentric and uh, intraspentric. That means in surrounding the anus, there are two sphincters. So the fistula from the anus, it will cross either internal sphincter or external sphincter. Then it comes and outside the outer opening will be seen outside the skin. Through the sphincters, how it is traversing, depending on that, the classification is based. There are a number of studies to know about the cause of the fistula, but particularly majority of the times, in 90% of the people, mainly it is related to constipation. If uh, patients are not passing stool properly and they are withholding the stool, for a lot of time the stool is uh, staying at the anus, it is not coming out means then the stool, the hard stool will slowly infect the crypto glands in the anal canal. In every human being in the anal canal, there are 9 to 12 glands will be there. Because of those anal gland secretion, we get uh, some type of water at the anus. If any gland is infected, because of uh, many causes it can be infected, but mainly um, when the stools are hard and the number of times patients are not passing stool properly or exposing uh, to the hard climate, some jobs like uh, sitting in prolonged times like uh, software jobs and prolonged travelings also and the diabetics are also more prone for uh, this cryptoglandular infection. Because of that glandular infection, there will be formation of an abscess over that area. Abscess means nothing but collection of pus. That pus will take some way, wherever it is possible, wherever the way is giving off. The pus will uh, travel through the easy folds and come out at the perineal skin that is surrounding the anus it will come out and it forms like a hole and uh, try to come out that through that hole it is not possible in majority of the times to come out through the anus it will come through the perineal skin so the main cause is mainly sitting for prolonged times, lifestyle habits that is uh, stools and uh, diabetics and other than this many other causes are there. Those are uh, not related to the fistula what we are dealing. The fistulas mainly it can be seen with uh, Crohn's disease, diverticulitis and inflammatory bowel disease irritable bowel diseases and some sexually transmitted diseases and uh, some cancers because of the radiation there will be a mucosa of the anus will be very thin and slender and it will uh, it can cause many times fistulas so the fistula what we are de dealing is mainly the fistulas which are occurring because of the stools that is uh, because of constipation and bowel movements because of that what uh, the type of fistulas uh, 
uh, farming we are only concerned about uh, those fistulas because the rest of the fistulas that crans diverticulitis uh, that uh, malignancies or radiation those uh, are the things uh, the main cause we have to address then only the these fistulas will it can be treated so uh, there are a number of causes still yet to uh, know what is the main cause for formation of the fistula is still yet to know clinically patient uh, can present uh, like uh, uh, on the face sometimes we can see some boil patient will come and say that uh, i got boil uh, but it actually it is it is infected pimple like that only in the perianal skin majority of the times patient will present with some small swelling the swelling comes and goes because of antibiotic or because of some home remedies because of some changes in the food that passing uh, very soft stool and all sometimes it will go so the people will think that boil is because of uh, perianal skin infection like uh, sweat can cause some itching and they will scratch and sometimes the boils will occur so like that the people will think the boil is because of some mainly in the indian uh, society the people will uh, think that we ate uh, hot foods because of that we got some boil and it burst and now there is no problem like that the, the people will come and present and uh, sometimes people will uh, present like uh, panty wetting at the end of the day when patient comes to home and uh, uh, whenever he is uh, throwing up the panties he can notice that some stains over the panties without that patient won't have any features because unknowingly it came and pain and burst on its own and there will be minor uh, pus discharge through the anus one drop two drops like that it will uh, wet and uh, damage the panty area so uh, people will come only with that complaint sometimes and uh, sometimes there is a boil recurrence and uh, it can cause uh, discharge of pus or sometimes it can cause discharge of blood also so if uh, bleeding comes they cannot identify the bleeding from which source in the females particularly in the periods also they will get this sort of problem so people cannot identify uh, whether the bleeding is from the anus or from the vagina or from the urine so there are different causes will be there people will come to the doctor then well and good uh, we can identify the thing and we can tell but majority of the times they won't come and uh, they will take lot of water buttermilk and all and it will subside by nature it will subside if it is very small one but uh, once it is going on uh, increasing the infection is increasing slowly instead of one opening there will be two openings and uh, the time span between the abscess collection of that swelling and the formation of that pus sometimes it will take one year in between uh, occurrence of the symptoms but slowly it comes to months that means the disease severity is increasing but that is better to come early to the doctor then the result will be better so if any doubt is there regarding that area any boil or pimple any discharge or any pain while sitting or discomfort sometimes itching these are the things they have to see the doctor now in the modern era there are lot of investigations but earlier only one investigation that is our finger doctor's finger is better than mri better than ultrasound better than many other advanced investigations when we put our finger into the anus the anus itself will reveal lot of findings like where is the internal opening that that internal opening means where the cryptogland anal gland where the site actually infected we can feel and we can know that whether which gland is infected so that is the internal opening that causes communication to the outside if you are properly identifying the internal opening then our surgery is easy if it is not possible to identify with your finger or with your examination but actually senior surgeons without any investigations they can able to identify the internal opening properly if they are unable to identify they will do the proctoscopy or anoscopy that means some instrument we will keep inside into the anus and under vision we will see what type of uh, infection and where is the gland infected 
then we can identify the internal opening. Other than that, now endoanal ultrasound, it is the recent evaluation. It can see like our finger, uh, the ultrasound probe is like our finger. We will keep uh, that probe into the anus and uh, that probe will see 360 degrees of the anus and we can see the infection point where is the source that is very easy investigation and uh, op based investigation and it is cheaper also we can uh, do endoanal ultrasound in every patient where the fistula we are suspecting and other than that there is a mr fistulogram mri this is high end investigation and uh, in the rural areas actually it is not possible and in many areas it is not available even though available the radiologist expertise and surgeon's expertise read that mri is difficult it is better to undergo endoanal ultrasound than the mri in majority of the issues if any recurrence of uh, fistula then definitely mri is must we have to know what is the problem why patient is uh, getting the fistula again fistula is a disease of recurrence that is the sentence made from since uh, from the ancient uh, days because we are treating the fistula what already occurred we are treating that fistula but we don't know the cause why that fistula is occurring to the patient so the cause we are not treating the fistula we are treating so that's why we call the fistula is a disease of recurrence but we will advise the patient what are the precautions they have to take care and all but uh, it is a disease of recurrence and not only the thing if we go to treatment part mainly we have to see about continence the main question when fistula patient comes to the op and presents in front of us and sitting and they are asking only mainly two questions one is recurrence because the fistula is a disease of recurrence and the second one is incontinence incontinence means there is loss of control to withhold the stool and uh, it is majority of the times after the surgery they have to rush to the washroom whenever they are getting that urge to pass so these are the two issues we have to address recurrence and incontinence if any complexity is there recurrence can be acceptable not the incontinence so the type of management we have to differentiate between sphincter sparing procedure and sphincter involving procedure because already we, we told that fistula traverses through the sphincters so how much sphincter is involving while cutting that is the main thing to address about incontinence so before surgery itself we have to make sure how much competent of that sphincter function how much tight how much strength it is having depending on that our procedure should be modified otherwise uh, if we do routinely for every patient the same procedure it cannot be successful and uh, patient will uh, end up with incontinence so the now the recent treatment is uh, lasers in lasers particularly we are not cutting the sphincters that is the new evaluation so mainly we are focused about we are preserving the function of continence so without cutting the sphincters giving good result to the patient that is the main aim and early to the work that is main focus of treatment is these are the three things we address recurrence incontinence and early to work if we address these three things then the patient will be happy to undergo the fistula and the majority of the times they used to go to quacks because ma mainly they are practicing since many ancient times uh, threading treatment uh, somehow if the fistula is very simple one and a straight track threading is also one of the good thing but uh, under sterilization and good scientific evaluation of internal opening and external opening and uh, hygienic conditions so we keep the thread nothing will happen uh, in complex fistulas even we are using some type of threads not those type of threads there are uh, different types of thread treatments are there cutting setons and uh, drainage setons uh, we won't use any cutting setons cutting setons will cause a lot of uh, inflammation and skin infections and lot of pain but draining seton is mainly to let out that pus 
because the pus is not getting access to come out we will put one drainage access uh, to come that pus out by that the internal opening will be totally dried then it is easy to address that fistula mainly incontinence and wound infection if you are giving a bigger wound on the buttock if you are not taking care of that wound then patient will land up with a wound infection so uh, previously uh, we used to call the patient daily to our opd to do the dressing but nowadays the concepts are changed we are not giving that much bigger wounds to the patient and particularly i am asking my patient to do only sitch bath that is sitting in the warm water cleaning the wound with their own hands and just keeping the cotton gauze piece over that area there is no need of the patient to come regularly and visit the doctor for small dressing uh, how to do the wound care and all uh, we will train them and once the surgery is done uh, actually we will keep the patient only for one day the next day we will discharge the patient and uh, patient can uh, after a week they can see the doctor and within a week or after a week they can attend their job also uh, there will be finer wounds will be there but they won't cause uh, much problem to attend their works so uh, post operatively mainly wound care and uh, regarding the incontinence that is uh, withholding the stool how to do that because of anesthesia any complications will be there sometimes we have to address them mainly these are the main complications and if uh, mainly these type of fistulas will occur it is okay well and good we can address sometimes the fistula will go and open at the abdomen sometimes they will go and open at the back of the chest Uh, that much bigger fistula sometimes they will go and open at the thighs so the main source in addressing the fistula is proper identification of the internal opening because the culprit here is only the internal opening if you are addressing properly identifying it and clearing it and giving the way to let out that pus then automatically whatever the length of the fistula it will heal definitely and mind you in the fistula the first attempt should be the best attempt if once you fail means it is very difficult to address that fistulas because uh, the skin nature there will be lot of fibrosis and there will be changes in the tracks the track cannot be a single line it can take diversity like ramifications and multiple paths it will take then it is very difficult to address that type of fistulas so in the fistula we can mainly name it as a simple fistula and complex fistula and sphincter sparing uh, techniques and sphincter preserving techniques these are the types of technologies we are using and uh, mainly our aim is to avoid the recurrence that is the number one second one is incontinence to avoid the incontinence and the third one is patient has to go to his work very early these are the three things we are aiming and we are giving better results to the patients in each of the sikindra part thank you